Hey cruise fans, it's Alan here from Cruise Non-Stop and today we are doing a full ship tour of the Carnival Pride after its month long dry dock upgrade in 2023. This video was shot on just the second cruise right after that maintenance period so everything you'll see here is bang up to date. So if you're planning a cruise on Carnival Pride or thinking about booking one then this video will tell you everything you need to know about the ship's layout and what to expect when you get on board. So welcome aboard and let's get started. Before we start, let's quickly talk about the ship itself. Carnival Pride was launched back in 2002 and has a gross tonnage of 88,500 tonnes. It houses up to 2,680 passengers and has a crew of 910. It's actually one of Carnival's spirit class ships, which basically means it's one of the smaller ships in Carnival's fleet. But don't let that put you off as it has a lot to offer. For this ship tour, I'm going to start at the very top of the ship and work down. But what I love about this ship is its quirky layout, where it has entertainment at the top of the ship and at the bottom, as you'll find out. So let's head up to deck 12. Here you'll find the kids' favourite spot, the Carnival Waterworks, with its amazing water slides. These are especially for the kids and for the young at heart. There are two slides, one of which extends right over the side of the ship. I really hope they've put new bolts in that during the dry dock period, that's all I can say. There is not much else to see on deck 12 as it is quite small, so let's head down to deck 11, the sports deck. The sports deck is located at the forward end of the ship. Here you'll find the usual basketball court which also doubles for other activities, including my favourite which is pickleball. Located around the outside of this deck is the mini golf course. There's also a very cool see-through lift to take you down to deck 10 which is the sun deck. If you're looking for a quiet spot to sunbathe, there is lots of space up here and I'm sure you'll be able to find a spot overlooking the main Lido pool if that's what you're looking for. This is also the favourite deck for joggers and walkers. You can walk all the way around the deck in three and a half laps equals one mile. At the front of the deck you can see the glass windows which look out from the Cloud9 Spa and Fitness Centre. The Fitness Centre is on two levels and has great views out to sea. As you can see, there is lots of gym equipment available and space to work out. The equipment looks very modern, so it looks like the fitness centre benefited from the dry dock period. From previous videos I have seen, it looks like the Cloud9 Spa and the salon areas have also had a makeover. Moving back to the rear of Deck 10, you'll find the newly rebranded Farnheit 555 Steakhouse. This was previously called Davis Steakhouse and has been upgraded during dry dock. Outside the steakhouse you'll find the glass see-through steps which are at the very top of the atrium. From here you can see all the way down to deck 2. The glass stairs just go down one level to deck 9, the Lido deck, and they take you straight into the Mermaid School buffet dining area. This is a huge area which is actually around a third of the length of the ship. There are lots of choices of food available here and only once did we find any problem finding seating. Food is served here from early in the morning until late at night. As well as standard buffet items, there are places where you can get food items cooked to order, including these amazing hot sandwiches. There is also a pizza grill here where they will make you almost any kind of pizza. This was open until 4 in the morning and was delicious. As well as the many buffet areas, there was also the seafood corner, which offers delicious fish and seafood for a small extra charge. Now let's jump back to the front of Deck 9, as I want to show you Carnival Pride's swimming pool areas from the front of the ship to the back. First up is the Apollo forward pool area. This was a relatively quiet area with nice seating either side of the pool. Walking to the rear of the ship takes you into the main pool area. You'll pass the first of the two pool bars, the Blue Iguana. 
This is the Venus Pool and it features a sliding glass roof which can be used for colder itineraries. On windy sea days the roof made a huge difference to the temperatures. This is also where you'll find the giant cinema screen for late night movies. This is also the spot where any daytime or evening pool entertainment is held, so it can get quite noisy here. Directly opposite the Blue Iguana Bar is the Red Frog Rum Bar. This is not to be confused with the Red Frog Pub, which is down on deck too, but it just serves a mean cocktail just the same. Just to the left of the movie screen you'll find my favourite spot on the ship, Guy's Burgers Joint. Here you'll find the main man himself explaining exactly how he makes those delicious burgers. Easily the best burgers I've had on any cruise ship. If Mexican food is more your scene, you'll find the Blue Iguana Cantina directly opposite Guy's Burger Joint. Now, let's head back all the way through the Mermaid Grill and you'll come to my favourite pool on the ship. This is the Serenity Pool area and is the adults only pool. It's actually a really great spot at the beginning of a cruise as it's kind of tucked away and it's a few days before most folks find it. As the cruise goes on though, it does become very popular, so it can be hard to find a spot here. There are upgraded loungers and really nice pods to shelter you from the sun or wind. This was a really great spot to get the last seat of the sun or when leaving port. The Serenity Pool also has its own bar. It's also one of the quickest bars to get served at on the whole ship. Now I did say earlier that this ship has a rather quirky layout. And that's because the interior entertainment decks are all the way down at the bottom of the ship on decks 2 and 3. Everything else in between is just cabin decks. So let's take the atrium elevator all the way down to deck 3, the Atlantic deck. At the front of deck 3 is the Taj Mahal Theatre. This is where every night you'll find a feature show from either the ship's own theatre staff, fun crew or a guest performer. Either side of the Taj Mahal Theatre you'll find another hidden gem on the ship, the interior promenade that is known as the Sunset Garden. This is a great spot to just relax and unwind. Moving towards the back of the ship, you walk through the rather grandly named Via Veneto Upper Promenade. This leads to the Ivory Piano Bar. This is a very lively spot at night. Next door is the warehouse. This is where you'll probably find your kids if they've gone missing. The warehouse is the ship's arcade and it was well stocked with some of the latest arcade games. Back out into the interior promenade and you'll come to the ship's Via Veneto shopping mall. Here's where you'll find everything from designer watches, jewellery, perfumes to alcohol, clothing and candy. The ship claims that you won't be able to match your prices on shore. The stores are very nicely laid out and were very well stocked. Let's now walk through to the central atrium area. This is where you will find the Pixel Photo Gallery. This looks down onto the central lobby and the atrium bar. Keep walking and you'll pass the photography store and also the new private photography studio that was added in dry dock. This leads you into the Raphael Lounge Bar area. Next you'll reach the upper level of the main dining room, the Normandy restaurant. The restaurant spread over two levels. We actually found the design a bit dark compared to other ships, but of course that's down to your personal taste. Of course, Deck 3 is called the Atlantic Deck for a good reason. It has an outside promenade. Uh, you can actually walk all the way around the back of the ship here. So let's head down to Deck 2 and take a closer look at the main dining room. As I mentioned before, if you're not in the central section it can be quite dark. I did however like how the waiter service stations were all in one side section. We actually had a great table right at the after the ship with a great view leaving port every evening. So 
So continuing our tour of deck two, as you walk out of the main dining room, watch out for the beauty's nightclub on your left. This was redesigned during dry dock. It actually used to cover two levels, but now it's just one. Opposite in the nightclub is the Captain's Dining Club Annex. Next we have the amazing Alchemy Bar. There is actually almost always some live entertainment on here. The Alchemy is actually one of the most popular bars on the ship as they make some of the most amazing martini cocktails you'll ever find at sea. Now let's head along to the central atrium. Here you'll find the atrium bar which was always very busy. Just like the Alchemy Bar, there is entertainment on here regularly. They have a very cool stage directly behind the bartenders, so it can be a great place to sit. You can also get a good view of the atrium here. Again, I found it very dark compared to other ships I've been on. This is also where you'll find guest services and of course your short excursions desk. Next up, if you're in the mood for some sushi, uh, you'll find the Bonsai restaurant. Uh, there's an extra charge if you want to dine here, of course. Uh, this is one of the specialty restaurants on the ship. Then we come to the casino. It's a very large casino, so for some reason people tend to get lost in here and never seem to find a way out. I wonder why that is. The casino bar was actually removed during the dry dock refurbishment, but you can still get bar service in here. Just outside the casino, there's a small internet cafe. Then you'll find the newly rebranded Heroes Bar, which was renamed and refurbished during dry dock. This is a sports type bar, but it's also set up to recognise our veterans, which was really nicely done. It was a really nice bar this, and we spent quite a bit of time in here. Next door to the Heroes Tribute Bar is the Red Frog Pub. This bar has been designed to resemble a typical British style pub. They had great entertainment on here every evening until the late hours. Back outside the Red Frog Prog is a Piazza Cafe where you can order some coffee or some delicious cakes and pastries. There's also a nice seating out area out here if you found the pub entertainment too loud. In this area you'll also find the brand new Carnival Adventure Store where you can buy all sorts of Carnival branded goodies. The last but not least is downstairs to deck one and that's where you'll find the Butterflies Lounge. This is where you'll find the comedy club hosted here most evenings. Well that's it folks, I hope you enjoyed taking a look at the newly refurbished Carnival Pride. Despite finding the design dark in some places, we did really enjoy the ship and the crew were fantastic. We loved the quirkiness of the layout and as it was so different from other ships we've been on. So if you're thinking about booking the Pride, I hope this has helped confirm that decision. You honestly, you won't be disappointed. If you have been on your Pride yourself, please do let me know in the comments and let me know what your favourite part of the ship was. I do hope you found this video helpful and if you did, please make sure you hit the like button and please also subscribe to our YouTube channel. That way YouTube lets you know anytime we have a brand new video to share. Thanks again for watching, this has been Alan from CruiseNonStop.com. Bon voyage and we'll see you soon.